Craigslist is nowhere near what it was before. It's been replaced by websites like Facebook Marketplace and Poshmark. Maybe a big reason for this stems from not just the rampant scams on the website, but also because it's the go-to site for a lot of creeps. So, for old time's sake, here are three Craigslist ads with disturbing backstories. In August 2014, an 18-year-old girl named Haley Turner posted a Craigslist notice stating that she was looking to be abducted and taken away. Although the post gained immediate online attention, the actual ad's images are no longer available. On August 7th, Haley left her house in Michigan and told her mother that she was going to run an errand. A few minutes later, she called a friend and mentioned seeing a man lying in the ditch in the middle of the road. She planned to check if he was okay. During the call, she suddenly said, he has a gun, and the phone was disconnected. Terrified, the friend immediately contacted Haley's father, who went to the area north of Ohio in Bedford Township. He found Haley's car running in the road, but Haley was missing. She was reported as a missing person and an investigation began. Strangely, at 10.06 p.m. on August 7th, Haley had rented DVDs for two movies from a family video store a few miles from Toledo, Ohio. The phone call with her friend took place shortly after. 16 hours after her disappearance, a local resident found Haley standing in a random corner, holding a puppy in a course, near Detroit. Though unscathed, she claimed that she had been abducted at gunpoint the night before and had jumped from a moving vehicle to escape. Police found the story questionable, as video footage from the DVD store showed nothing suspicious and there were no signs of an attack on her body. After hours of questioning, Haley Turner confessed and pleaded guilty to causing a false police report to be filed. She was sentenced to three years of probation, one month of community service, and find $115,000 to reimburse the sheriff's office for the 16-hour search. While her motives for faking the abduction were never revealed, her mother interpreted it as a cry for help. Considering the emotional difficulties Haley had experienced that year, in a disturbing turn of events, police revealed that a man had responded to the ad asking to be abducted. However, Haley decided to fake her disappearance by herself instead of involving him. The man who responded to Haley's ad was never found by police, adding an unsettling layer to the story. This job listing, which was posted on Craigslist in 2011, was looking for someone to look after a small farm in southern Ohio and to feed a few cows for $300 a week. It turned out to be among the most well-known ad-related criminal cases in the previous 10 years. The job posting said, caretaker position for farm, Southern Ohio. Simply watch over a 688 acre patch of hilly farmland and feed a few cows. You get $300 a week and a nice two bedroom trailer. Someone older and single preferred, but will consider all. Relocation a must. You must have a clean record and be trustworthy. This is a permanent position. The farm is mainly used as a hunting preserve, is overrun with game, has a stocked three acre pond, but some beef cattle will be kept. Nearest neighbor is a mile away. The place is secluded and beautiful. It will be a real getaway for the right person. Job of a lifetime. If you are ready to relocate, please contact ASAP. Position will not stay open. Include name, age, phone number, and email. An individual identifying himself as Jack conducted in-person interviews with a few of the guys who answered the advertisement. He was accompanied by his 16-year-old accomplice, Brobin Refi, whom he called his nephew. The applicants that advanced to the interview stage claimed that neither Jack nor his alleged nephew struck them as odd. Instead, they simply appeared to be two farmers in need of someone to manage their property. Jack conducted an interview with a 48-year-old guy named Scott Davis in a small restaurant in Marietta, Ohio. Davis was the second to last applicant to go through the hiring process. He rode to a secluded forested location close to Akron with Jack and Brogan after breakfast. 
As soon as Davis stepped out of the vehicle to take in his surroundings, he heard a click. When he turned back, Jack was aiming a gun at him. That's when he realized that the gun had misfired, but Jack shot him in the elbow before he could respond. Davis was wounded, but he managed to get away. After seven hours of running through the woods in fear of his life, he found a house and begged the owner for assistance. After they dialed 911, word of the incident spread. Five days later, Deborah Bruce called the police to report that her 51-year-old twin brother, David Polly, had answered the same Craigslist ad. Deborah claimed that her brother had driven with all of his belongings from Virginia to Ohio in the hopes that the new job would help him rebuild his finances. Tragically, a few days later, authorities discovered the bodies of Ralph Gehr and David Polly buried in the woods near the location where Davis was shot in the elbow. At this stage of the investigation, Detectives were able to discern a pattern among the victims that Jack and Brogan targeted, middle-aged men who were weak and had few familial ties, as well as those who were homeless or struggling. They pretended to be a career chance that would change their lives in order to entice them to an isolated place, just to immediately shoot them and take everything of their possessions. With so few family links, they hoped that no one would notice their disappearance which would give Jack and Brogan plenty of time to bury the dead and destroy any evidence. This pattern explains why certain applicants, including 58-year-old Ron Sanson, a college-educated former Navy officer and an anonymous woman in her 20s, who had previously applied for the position, were turned down during the interview process. Police found the residence of a guy named Joe Bice in Akron, Ohio, after following the Craigslist ad they came across during their investigation. He denied putting up the ad and stated that the person who rented out his basement area was most likely the one who posted it. Joe Bice said he only knew his tenant by the name of Dutch when the police questioned him for his tenant's name. Thanks to a phone conversation Dutch made to Joe Bice, investigators managed to locate him. On November 16, 2011, Dutch was taken into custody by the police and identified as 52-year-old Richard Beasley. Dutch was unaware that his landlord had been in contact with the authorities. Scott Davis verified right away that this man was the same one who had shot him in the woods and interviewed him at the restaurant. Richard Beasley reportedly utilized aliases to avoid being discovered while he escaped from the police, even using the name of his victims at times. Richard Beasley's young accomplice, Brogan Raffi, was also taken into custody by the police at that same time. Beasley had taken in and supervised 16-year-old Brogan from Stowe, Ohio, while he was a high school student. When Raffi's house was examined by police, they discovered multiple firearms and an unsettling poem from August 16, 2011, stashed away in his computer files. The poem read, we took him out to the woods on a humid summer's night. The loud crack echoed, and I didn't hear the thud. Subsequently, investigators discovered that Ralph Gurr, one of the victims police had discovered in the woods, had been murdered as depicted in the poem. A few days later, on November 25, Timothy Kern, a 47-year-old man, was discovered dead in the woods behind a mall in Akron. In 2013, Brogan Rafi was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of release, and Richard Beasley was sentenced to execution after it was determined that he had committed 27 counts of aggravated murder, aggravated robbery, kidnapping, and having illegal weapons. This seemingly harmless employment posting turned out to be one of the most well-known alluring postings in the history of the website, and significantly contributed to the negative reputation that Craigslist currently bears. An unsettling ad posted in Craigslist's personal area on January 2, 2016. The personal section was a place where people could post personal ads for various reasons. You could say that it was a mixture between an online dating service, a forum for exchanging personal insights and experiences, and a place to meet like-minded people. Scams and illegal activities were known to occur in the personal section despite the fact that most users used it for valid purposes. The individual who posted the specific ad in question claimed to be a serial killer. 
the poster of the disturbingly named message threatened to strike again and named two public officials specifically. Ad text read, Tulsa murderer, I was wanting to thank Tulsa for letting me have my first kill. It all started here, so I was thinking it should also be my first. I was nervous as hell, but I will get over it. It was a stranger on stranger, so the police will have a difficult time. It will not be my last, though. Thinking about going to OKC for the next, to the people who started it all, Julie Free, Judge Glasgow. The Tulsa Police Department opened an investigation after the ad was reported to the authorities right away. The ad specifically expressed thanks to Judge Glasgow, who worked in the Tulsa County District Court's probate division, and a woman called Julie Free, who was employed by the Department of Corrections. Thanking them and referring to them as the ones who got it all started, the message hinted at a potential motive involving their involvement with the criminal justice system. The Tulsa Police Department received all relevant information concerning the post from Craigslist, but the investigation produced no conclusive evidence. The police claim that no recent crimes that fit the advertisement's description have occurred. Although the police agency stated that the advertisement was probably hoax, no evidence was found to confirm this, leaving open the possibility that the post could have been legitimate. 